Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and today I want to talk about queries in Access and particularly about using calculations in Access queries. There is one thing that most people that know Microsoft Excel very well don't get right the first moment they start using Microsoft Access. There's a fundamentally different concept. In Excel you put in your data and calculations and whatever all in one sheet you get all this mixed up. That is great for working with data when you try to visualize data, when you do ad hoc calculations. But it's not so good in a structured process in context of an application. And Access is meant to be a tool to build database applications. So there's a fundamentally different concept in Access. In Access, data and logic should be separated. And the environment, the, the possibilities of access kind of enforce that principle. You will have your tables to store data. They are mainly dump storage containers. You put data in there, you get data out there, but it will not change in between. It is not supposed to change. If you want to do calculations like you do in Excel, you will not do that in a table in Access. But you will use a query, most of the time at least, you will use a query to do your calculations in Access. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. But please always, if you are an Excel user and move to Access, always keep in mind logic does not belong into a table. So keep your calculations in either a query in Access or maybe if it's complex in VBA code. I'm going to talk about that later. First, we're going to focus on calculations with basic expressions, like basic mathematic calculations in Access. Okay, let's look at some code. Before I show you how to do calculations with data in Access tables, I'll just go to the Create menu here and create a query and I'm going to show you how to create the most simple calculation in an access query. I do not add any table in here and then I go to the SQL view and I just enter any calculation here. It can be as simple as 1 plus 1 or 2 times 5 and then I just run this simple select statement without any table underlying it and then I get the result in the query result window. That is the most simple way to do a calculation in Access but you will probably never use that because as I said Access is all about data. So let's discard this query and then look at this very small table I prepared. It is tiny. It's just an ID for items. Here's an item name and there's a net price. So that can be part of some um, shop or invoicing application where you are selling items and um, do some calculations with it. It's intentionally very, very basic. What I'm going to do now is to show you how to use the net price in here to calculate a gross price using an expression in Access. So I go back to the Create tab again, go to Query Design and now I actually add the tiny sample table I've got here. I select all the columns and drag them down here and now I put my cursor in a new column here and I just start typing net price plus net price divided by 
100 times 19 and 19 is the current VAT rate in Germany. So I use 19 for 19 percent. The, the expression uh, divided by 100 times 19 is just to calculate the VAT on the net price. Access automatically adds this expression one in front of that. That is basically an alias. I can type whatever I want in here. I could say that's banana, but um, it is actually a good practice to enter meaningful names here. So I type in gross price because that's what it is. And you see a little problem here. You cannot see the whole expression. You can drag that a little bit wider. I could even drag it a lot wider. But if you've got complex expressions, the space in this single line will not be enough. So you can click in there, use the context menu and invoke the zoom window. And then you will have this window that is much more suitable to see more complex expressions. And you might uh, see, I just made a typo there. I mistyped net price. So it was actually a good thing I showed that to you because otherwise I might not have noticed. Okay, now I can just run this query and you see the net price is calculated, uh, the gross price is calculated in this column. From a mathematical point of view, the calculation is absolutely correct. But if we look at the items in here, at, the, uh, at their description, then you notice, notice the postage stamps here. And in Germany, that is actually wrong to add VAT on uh, postage stamps because they are VAT exempt. And the basic food items up here, like milk and coffee beans, they would use a reduced VAT rate of 7% in Germany. So my calculation is not correct for these particular items. And of course, I cannot know where in the world you are situated and what the VAT or GST or sales tax rules in your country are. But many countries use similar rules that they have some products that are VAT exempt. Some products use a reduced rate or there may be even multiple reduced rates for different groups of products and all the other products will use the main or normal VAT rate. So I cannot use the hard coded value in my calculation. You see the 19% the in here is applied to all records and that is not correct for VAT calculation. Nevertheless, I just save the query and close it. And now we go to the design of the table to put that problem right. And I add another column VAT rate that is going to store the VAT rate per item. That is obviously a number and there might be um, decimal values if for in the VAT rates. So I use the data type decimal and I say the precision is three. So it can have total three digits in total and one digit in uh, one decimal digit to the right of the decimal separator. That's what precision and scale is about. Obviously, the precision and scale might be different in your country. If you got uh, VAT rates with more than one decimal digit, you need to change the, the values accordingly to that. So I save the table and close it. Now that we added the new column VAT rate for our items in the table, 
we need to enter the correct VAT rates. I used the German VAT rates because um, those are the ones I know right now, but uh, they, these will be different for your country, obviously. This is not the ideal way to store VAT rates for items. That is a rather quick fix to the immediate problem here. I will do another video on VAT data and how that could be stored in a much better and uh, more efficient way. But to show the basic solution to the problem with our calculation, this is good enough and we will continue to adapt our query. I open the design view of our query and I go back to the zoom window of our expression. And now I go in here and enter VAT rate. And that references the column from the table. You see over here is the VAT rate in the table that appeared here. Now, you noticed I put square brackets around the column name and for net price access did that automatically. These are optional if you just use basic numbers and letter characters for your column names, but they will become mandatory if you got some special characters in here. And I'll show that with a simple example. If I just assume you've got a column that is named that way, net hyphen price, then it looks like a calculation, like you would like to subtract the value of price, the price column from the value of the net column. And that is obviously going to result in an error because um, if that is your column name, you will probably don't have the both columns net and price and then the calculation will fail and um, access gets confused what it is supposed to do here. So if you got a column with hyphens, dashes, uh, slashes or spaces in there, you absolutely need to add these square brackets around the name to signal to access this whole term here is the name of a column. I absolutely discourage you to use special characters and spaces in column names or object names or whenever naming anything in the context of your access database. If you need to display them to the user in a meaningful way, then you should rather use a description for that column that will be displayed to the user. But the underlying name of a column, a table, a query, a form or whatever in Access should never include any spaces. I confirm the zoom window with OK. Now our expression here for the gross price calculation has changed. And I run the query again. And now you see the calculation here is actually correct for the stamps. There was no VAT added on top of that. And for these basic food items, there was a lower VAT rate of 7% used as I entered in the table. But another problem arose here. These are just numeric values now. Here they are nicely formatted as currency with a euro symbol behind them. And these are just numbers with lots of decimal digits to the right. And that is because our new column VAT in the table, just go in here, it's just a number. And now we multiply a currency by a number and access is not entirely sure is the result still of data type currency or is it a number or whatever is it. So we need to explicitly format the results of the query. 
So back to the design view of the query. And now I select this column by entering the cursor in here. And there is a property shield sheet on the right and the selection type field properties. These are properties of this field, this column. And there's a format property here. And now I can set that to currency to tell access to format the results of the calculation as a currency value. And now this looks much prettier here. So problem solved. I save the query and close it. Now you got a good foundation of knowledge on how to use expressions for calculations in access queries. And I think every access user beyond the pure application user, everyone who is designing queries or designing applications in access should know these basic facts about calculations and expressions in access queries. Originally, I wanted to include a part about calling and using functions in access queries. But I think this video is long enough now as it is. And I will record the stuff about functions in another video that is going to be released very, very soon. So please, if you like the content, hit the like button or subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.